Okay, so here are my thoughts on Thinking Out Loud, the fifth episode from Series 5 of Inside Number 9. Only one more episode to go. And, just so you know, I put off playing the Final Fantasy VII demo so I could record this first. So I really hope you're all grateful. The concept of Thinking Out Loud involves six actors all playing directly to the camera, and all for different reasons. One makes a dating video, one appears to be having a therapy session, one is on death row, another one is vlogging, one has made a video for his unborn daughter, and the last one is a singer. Given the nature of this episode, the whole thing was going to live or die by these performances. And I have to say, every last one of them was fantastic. The singer, what can I say? Absolutely beautiful voice. You'll notice she's also blind, which has some significance to the story, and it's not the first time Number 9 has cast a disabled actor. The deaf character in Series 3's Empty Orchestra was also played by an actual deaf person. Rhys Shearsmith's character broke my heart. I thought the story was beautiful, and his acting was absolutely superb. The YouTuber was exactly the right amount of bubbly, hyper-edited and annoying, and I enjoyed it as much as I was cringing at it. If anyone thought that was overkill, I guess you haven't seen that many influencers in recent years. Bloody YouTubers, am I right? As for Steve Pemberton's character, it felt like an unusual choice, but he definitely looked like he was having fun with it. I guess Steve just really wanted to do accents this series. Maxine Peake's performance was one I was really looking forward to, especially after seeing her carry an entire episode of Black Mirror pretty much by herself. That's Metalhead from Series 4 if anyone's interested. And as for the dating video, I just couldn't stop thinking of the League of Gentlemen's attachment sketch and wondering if he was very kind, kind, fairly kind, or not at all kind to animals. So while the performances were all incredibly strong and the episode's concept turned out to be an interesting one, I'm afraid I do have a few criticisms of thinking out loud. This is where I'll be getting into spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen it already, I'd highly recommend watching it first. Okay, so personally, I found the exposition near the end of the episode to be overly clunky. It didn't have any of the subtlety I've come to expect from Number 9, plus I think the fans of the show aren't the types who need everything all spelled out. Quite literally too, in this case. The anagrams, for example, would have been something fun to figure out on our own. Allowing the viewers to put the pieces together themselves worked for Love's Great Adventure because we like being credited with a bit more intelligence. And they know this, they know we like to rewatch the episodes to find all the hidden nine references and hunt the hare. The reveal that Nadia had DID should have been enough in itself to prompt an instant and absolutely mind blowing rewatch. But for me, it just ended up as more of an info dump. There was one other slightly concerning aspect that Steve Pemberton did address on Twitter last night, and that was about the cliché of having a character with DID resorting to violence. I thought it did make sense for this character to want revenge, regardless of any mental health issues, and the ending was intended as more of a dark number 9 twist than anything else. And Steve has pretty much said the same thing. But still, it's something people really need to be careful of when writing these characters. However, it appears that Steve and Reese did a lot of research into the condition itself and tried to keep their portrayal as accurate as possible. Plus, it seems to have been well received in general. Overall, I think this was an interesting approach to filming and storytelling. I'm glad they did their research. And while the big reveal was a bit ham fisted, it didn't ruin the entire thing for me. And once again, brilliant performances from the entire cast. So that was Thinking Out Loud. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, just to go off on a complete tangent, I finally got round to watching Parasite at the weekend, and I can definitely see what people mean when they say it's like a feature-length number 9 episode set in Korea. This will come as a surprise to absolutely no one, but I loved it, and I urge every single one of you to give it a watch. Will it get an analysis video from me in the future? It's certainly possible, but I have another couple of videos I'm planning to make first. And I can definitely say, I'm really looking forward to those. So remember to subscribe, ring the bell, and join me again next week for the final episode, The Stakeout, which looks like it's going to be a good one. Till then, bye bye.